Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Seiko Starcraft, or Seiko Beercraft, is happy to present you with a Terran versus Zerg. We got Day 9 versus Evil Geniuses Idra. Now, before everybody gets excited, I almost guarantee this isn't the Day 9 that most people are familiar and probably got their own little nerd crushes for. But, regardless, I'm excited because it is a Terran vs. Zerg, and I have not seen much of Idra in a long time. I pay attention to the pro scene quite a bit, and I've not been seeing a lot of him. So I'm glad he's still out there trying to make it happen. Day 9, if this is the real Day 9, I'd be giddy. I'm so excited about that opportunity. But Day 9 is probably the person that most got me into wanting to cast. Not just because he's really, really smart at the game, but because he just seems to really have so much fun doing it. So he's one of the first casters that I really became familiar with. That and his, you know, brother and his casting partner, Tasteless and Artosis. Regardless, if people don't know who Day9 is, I suggest looking it up. He does some really fun stuff around Funday Monday, started a whole cool trend about Funday Monday and mono battles, which me and my friend have gotten in on a few. I think I've got a couple of the replays up on my channel. People do want to see speed up a little bit. See some of the failed attempts that we've had to submit for Fun Day Mondays. I think the last one we did was uh, Power Cheese, where one person slow back down because my computer's going to blow up otherwise. We see that Idris still kind of poking around here. We did the Power Cheese Fun Day Monday where it's a 2v2. Is that a hatch first? Yes, it was. A 2v2 and one person cheeses and the other person goes Massive Economy. I quite enjoyed doing that, though it seemed really strange that sometimes when you just all in cheese, like I'd play Zerg and go for a, a six pool drone pull all in and then just kill everything. Oh, excuse me, extractor grab there, I think that's, oh yes, yeah, kokanee burps. It's the beer out here. I think that's a wise move for Idra to do there, particularly if he thinks that the Terran player will be teching up. Also because he's going to be getting out the Reapers. He either is going to get the Terran player to commit to killing this with his Reapers, or he's just not going to have a second gas for a long time. Anywho, it seems though the Terran's going to go for a fast expand anyways. Behind this, getting up gas for speed. Oh, as I was saying, cheesing and winning. I don't know how I really feel about it. If you cheese, I mean, you're supposed to just win immediately, but it's always so much more fun if it's a really close game and you just hold it off. But, in the case of some of the cheeses that I've done, it's just, you just win. Just, they die in the first, like, four minutes, and it's really just kind of sad. Anyways, I was speaking recently, speaking recently, we've been listening recently to some casters talking about the fact that Zerg right now, oh, it looks like he got a little extra gas to do a very fast drone pull off the geyser, that Zerg right now is kind of limited in the early game. There's not much you can do to just stop the Reaper attack, unless you cut so much, you get out early speed or roaches or something, you really can't do much as a Zerg against a Terran against the two Reaper opening. It's so safe, it's really smart, all you can do is try to take as little damage as possible. And for a Terran, I mean, this isn't too much of an investment, it doesn't cost too much, he didn't have to give up an SCV to scout, he doesn't have to scan, he knows everything that's happening. So this is a really great advantage. And Zerg really can't do anything until the speed is out. And you see that we already have Day 9 returning home with his Reapers. Mostly because he's got to go and kill his Extractor, I feel. He's not getting enough gas to really do anything crazy. Though he's moving into the Hellion Reaper push. Somebody like Demuslim you'll watch do really, really good attacks with the Hellion and Reaper combination. Ling's out on the map, seeing what's going on. Idra does know that the Reapers are at home, obviously, so he's not too worried. What else can he see with this? No, he can't see anything else uh, of what the production facilities are at this point. He does get in and see the Hellions, Bunker, Fast Expand, so he saw what he needed to see from that. Back at home, you see Idra's getting up a really big worker lead. He's getting a Roach Warren and a Baneling Nest, so it looks like he really just wanna, wants to play to not lose, or since he's got his speed, the Baneling Nest and the Roach, he's going to go for some sort of bust. We see no third base coming out of him here. He does have speed finished, which means if he got out enough links, he would be able to control this. So going for a third base would be pretty safe right now out of Idra. 
but we don't see him doing that. Instead, we see a big pile of roaches coming out. So, pretty certain he's going to go for some big pressure as my computer slows down to a crawl. Beer. Mm -hmm. Now, this is enough to kind of pressure the queens at the front, but not enough to really kill anything, particularly as the roaches are just popping out. You notice he's running around the south, with his queens being to the north, and he's going to keep a couple of roaches up here. Yep, there he goes just to drive that back. We'll see the day nine just parking out front here. Behind this, yep, there we go. We could hear that coming. Seven Bane Links, that should be enough to bust down this wall, no problem. The only thing that Idra would have to worry about is mines, so yeah, here comes a few Links out front just to check for any mines. You have to send a few Links because mines won't get triggered super fast. Day 9's coming back home with his units. More Banelings, more Zerglings. He does pull away the SCVs in time. Really smart. These Roaches will clean up this attack force pretty good. Behind this, I'm surprised to see Idra not going for another base just yet. There's no tanks out right now for the Terran player. So that's, that's pretty juicy. Bust is complete. He needed a few more banelings, I think, to get the. Oh, look at the damage to the SCVs! Oh man, that's what you need a few more speedlings and some more banelings for. I actually think that Day Nine held that really well. Look at this, the health of these SCVs—they're toast. But if you look at the units there, I mean, it's it's still a pretty big disparity, but. 11 workers killed isn't bad for this stage of the game, but the amount that Idra had to commit into that, all those roaches and banelings, all the gas he had to take. Third base is super delayed. Oh, excuse me. Some more good air. Uh, I actually really like Day 9's position right now. I should be able to shut down this third base, no problem. We do have some speedlings out, but that's not going to be enough to really deal with these, uh, these marines. Upgrades on the way. Pretty well timed for both players. <laughs> That's ballsy. And in the main base, there isn't anything really to deflect this yet. Might as well get some guaranteed damage. Takes out an overlord. And come in the big pile of lings. Only loses one out of that, which is alright. Uh-oh. Marauders. Or these Hellions, yes. Nice splits here by Day9. He's keeping... Oh, even better pull by Idra, keeping the Banelings alive. But look at the supply difference right now. Day9's just powering stuff up so big. Keeps producing workers, dropping mules. Does he have a third command center finished yet? No, he's going to have to consider dropping down one of those here pretty soon. But he might just be trying to push out for a win after such a big hole. Great position out of Day9 here. Banelings are still alive, but there's no speed. You'd have to get really lucky to hit with those banelings, and they're already somewhat damaged. Uh, I don't know if Day Nine's gonna, sorry, if Idris gonna be able to hold this. He's gonna have to cancel. Maybe not. Good pickup there from Day Nine. Lost very, very little. Oh uh, yeah, just drop down here, heal up. Might as well. Day 9 powering still further ahead. He's got his plus 2 started, another command center. Good upgrades out of Hydra, but at this point he's got to build so many units, he can't build the workers that he wants to at this point. Well, pick him up. Lost a little bit more right there. Just being a jerk too, I like this. Might as well, just getting a little bit of damage here and there. Poke, have a little bit of fun. Another big double drop coming from the south. Nothing here to defend this. Looks like he's going to drop right behind the mineral line. There isn't any banelings, I don't think, nearby to deal with this either. Is there a drop in the main? Oh, the reapers went back in. Three kills on that reaper before he went down. Man, Day 9's playing a great game. See if he has to pick up. No, he's slaughtering through those lings. Those lings got toasted. I don't know, Idra. You're, uh, you're in a boatload of crap right now. You're not going to make this. 
still great upgrades on the Marines cut through those links really fast and Idra leaves the game uh, not a very impressive game out of Idra I get the bust and it's not that even Day9 did an amazing job with holding it but it just didn't seem there was enough here from Idra he only, like two more Bane links he would have killed another 10 SCVs or something like that but he didn't do enough damage to economy or the army to justify it and then he just couldn't catch up again so uh, congratulations to Day9 we'll leave it at that thanks everybody for watching and we'll talk to you guys real soon